Coach, thank you for taking time with us, especially after this week uh, from UCLA and also taking time after uh, all the uh, friends and family that you had to uh, go through. Certainly. Um, can you give us uh, your impressions of the match? Specifically, can you touch on what the um, if your team met your expectations from what you had going into the match today? Sure, yeah, I think uh, UCLA is a great team. Uh, they have a, a host of weapons running a, you know, a 6-2 at times and spinning out of it, but they just have so many different uh, ways to, to play great volleyball. So uh, we were very fortunate to be invited out to play them, thanks to, to John Sparrow for inviting us to, uh, for this match for the second year in a row. Um, and yeah, I think our expectations, did we did we meet them? I think on, on some level, we surpassed our expectations. I thought our our good volleyball was very good. I thought our ability to play some defense and, and hit some balls in transition uh, was fantastic. I thought our ability to, to actually serve, receive some of their toughest serves was, was great. Um, and we didn't really uh, hit our marks in some other areas. I thought some of the consistency, ability to be patient, um, I thought some of our own sh uh, shot selection wasn't as great as I would have liked. So like any volleyball match, it's not usually one thing or the other. I thought we did certainly achieve some great things, um, but there's some things to work on. And that's really why we wanted to play UCLA uh, at this point in the season was to figure out where are our weaknesses, uh, what are some things we need to work on. I think this is the perfect time of the season for those weaknesses to be exposed for us to keep working harder and moving forward. Let's touch about um, going playing um, on this West Coast swing. Can you tell us how that came about and uh, specifically on this trip, uh, how did you decide which uh, teams to play? Yeah, it's actually the West Coast swing for Princeton volleyball has dated, I think, back to the early 90s, uh, maybe mid 90s. I'm not exactly sure. It's before my time. But um, back then, Glenn Nelson, the old uh, coach for Princeton for 30 years, he was from Southern California. The majority of the recruits and players were from Southern California. So this is our intercession break between first and second semester. And they would all come back home to be with their families. And they were back home and they were friends with a lot of the SoCal guys. And they just sparked up these matches uh, over time. It became kind of a tradition. I think it's over 20, 25 years. And so um, when I got here, it was on the schedule and we just kept it going. And uh, actually my first collegiate match that I coached in 2010 was against John Sparrow at Irvine. Um, and so yeah, we reached out to the MPS and said who's available and Spraw has always been very gracious and invited us out to play and so that's an exciting one. Um, Kevin Ring has always been a, a very gracious host and invited us out. That's been a match we've always done down in San Diego. And then we try to pick up a third. Uh, we played uh, UC Irvine last year, this year we've got Concordia. So three is a nice number for us and spaced out depending on everyone's schedule. A lot of times the NPSF schedule depending who's available. But um, we're excited about this week and uh, the balance and the different styles of the teams that we get a chance to play. So we're, we're excited. Um, speaking of Coach Sparrow, let's uh, jump into uh, you being named the uh, Boys National Team Head Coach. Uh, can you tell us uh, about your relationship with uh, Coach Sparrow and how that came about and uh, your reactions to being named the uh, coach? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I've known John uh, really since 2009 when I, I got named the head coach of Princeton and, you know, was looking to some of the some of the, what I consider the best minds in the game. And, and John was doing some amazing things at Irvine and I reached out to him and just asked if I could pick his brain from time to time. And uh, he was very gracious and, and allowed me to, to pick his brain and talk some volleyball and uh, let me into his gym a couple times to watch some practices and, and just was always been very gracious and uh, helpful in sort of mentoring me along with some things. So really appreciative of that. And um, yeah, as it relates to USA Volleyball, he, he he was uh, a, a key key person in naming me the head coach for the boys youth national team as he is the head coach for the national team and involved with the national team staff so getting the nod from him uh, was extremely humbling and, and, and really gratifying and exciting and uh, I can't I couldn't be more excited for the opportunity um, the staff we're gonna have is outstanding Brad Keller who was here tonight will be the uh, associate head coach and I can't wait to work with him he's a good friend of mine and a, a brilliant coach uh, Theo Edwards from Northridge will be another assistant on the staff and then we've got uh, Kevin Birch from Ohio State is gonna be our, our data volley technician so it's gonna be a dynamite staff and uh, we can't way to, to play this summer. Awesome. Uh, let's go back to your team. Um, you spoke about the intercession break, but one thing that's different from this year, um, pr this year from previous years, is that you got to play a team from Canada as well as Ohio State before the uh, long layoff. Can you tell us the benefit of playing those two teams and how that's uh, helped you, or you think it has helped your uh, squad? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, typically uh, Princeton's in finals sort of the last two, two weeks or middle part of January so we don't usually start our season until this week uh, and then last year we got invited out to the Santa Barbara tournaments and we realized you know playing in early January and then getting to go back and retool and train for a few weeks during the finals time uh, and then coming out here was so helpful and so when Ohio State called and I worked with Pete Hansen last summer and got a, got to meet him and get a nice relationship with him he's a fantastic coach and 
and mentor. Uh, he called and said, hey, we're coming through. We'd love to pick up a match with you guys, but these are the dates that work. I said, yeah, let's do it. Uh, same thing with Laval, a really talented team from Canada offered to come play us. And uh, we were fortunate to play those guys in early January. And again, sort of have some of our uh, deficiencies exposed early so we could go into the, the, you know, the gym and train and try to get better and then you know come back and, and keep training out here. So uh, really helpful sort of measuring sticks along the way to get us uh, to hopefully where we need to be. And uh, last question, can you uh, just uh, touch on the uh, challenges of replacing five starters and specifically the challenges of replacing and it's not really replacing uh, Cody Kessel? Yeah, you know, I think uh, obviously replacing five starters is, is, is a big change. It's a wholesale change of the lineup. Um, Cody Kessel, uh, you can look at his kills and his blocks. Um, but what we're finding out that it was really Cody and Will and Tony, uh, you know, that class, it was their drive. Um, that was so prevalent in our program for four years and it's left this team uh, with the necessity to find a new identity and find new guys that are going to step up and, and sort of grab the torch and take this drive. Um, and I think we're still searching for that. I think obviously we found the starting lineup and we've, for the most part, we found some guys that are going to going to play for us, but we're still looking for those guys to sort of gel and find some cohesion uh, on this drive to get to the next level. And so I think that's been the biggest shift is uh, the shift in, in, in the power of the leadership uh, to move forward. But I'm excited with what I see. I see some of it starting to come out, sort of little buds that are, that are, that are burgeoning and um, excited to see that start to flourish in the next few weeks as we head into conference play. All right, I lied. One more question. That, Please. Uh, uh, surprise. Who, who is your favorite commissioner? My favorite commissioner, the EIVA commish, Yvonne Marquez, uh, is, a, is a good friend. Uh, he was the coach at Concordia University back in New York when I was playing at Vassar, and just a fantastic guy with a ton of energy. And if you follow Twitter, uh, Instagram, EIVA commish, he's always on there promoting the EIVA, promoting volleyball, really. Uh, just a fantastic guy. And Yvonne, we appreciate everything you do for the EIVA, for men's volleyball across the, the country. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach, and uh, thank you for taking time with us, and uh, best of luck the rest of the season. Happy to do it. Thank you.